Uh, quick intro. So for those of you that, that weren't here this morning or that don't know, um, Landmakers are development partner in Ukraine. We worked with them since 2015, and there's about 10 people that we usually work with there. So a big part of our team, of actually our colleagues, because we see them more as colleagues than partners, um, are stuck at home since the war. And uh, they would love to be here today, they would love to travel, but they cannot. And they don't know when they can travel again, and what the future is going to look like. So yeah, we feel very um, sad that they are in the situation uh, there and their families. We try to support them in any way that can. we can. We'll, we'll show you a little bit about what we've been doing after this talk. Uh, Roy, luckily, uh, is here uh, to share a bit more about the life of our team currently in Ukraine, because we're talking about community, we're talking about connections today, uh, but let's not forget that uh, not everybody can be here. So I asked Roy to share a little bit about how the war has impacted the life of our colleagues. Um, so thank you, Roy, for it. Taco, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for a great, great intro. Yeah, so a few words about myself. Uh, I'm Roy. I'm a head of digital business development at Lambrick Solutions. Um, just quickly, a few words about us. We are a tech consulting and engineering company that creates IoT, digital and AI solutions. And um, we have been working with Drupal CMS uh, from early days, and that's how we get connected with Taco and with Open Social Team. Uh, as we are based in Ukraine, uh, yeah, today I will be talking about how the war have impacted our business and our people. And yeah, I'll just share some, some examples and some, some stories to tell. Uh, yeah, a few words about our collaboration with Open Social. So Tak already mentioned, but I just wanted to add that, yeah, we are like long-standing partners and uh, we started our collaboration in 2016. Uh, so right now, our dedicated development team helps uh, build and maintain the platform as well as uh, many projects based on the platform. Uh, some projects that we did together uh, is like uh, Greenpeace, it's uh, SparkBlue, and a couple of projects for European Commission. Okay, um, yeah, so how basically the war and the, everything that is happening in Ukraine through the last year impacted us? Um, yeah, so like from a, uh, f from a thing of numbers, like we started, when the war started, we were a team of uh, 160 people, and uh, right now we are 214. Uh, so yeah, just to give you the understanding that um, we keep growing, we keep uh, launching and starting new projects. And uh, I'm proud to say that, we, uh, that none of our clients decided to stop working with us because of the war. Um, and I mean, even we see the opposite situation, a uh, great case as we get a new project from Dutch Drupal Association and um, they reach out to us with a Drupal project was basically rebuilding of their website. And uh, they typically will do, this, will do this project by themselves because I mean, the Dutch Drupal Association, the board of directors of this association is based of CEO and co-founders of um, Drupal agencies from Netherlands. So they typically will do this project by themselves, but they decided to contribute to Ukrainian Drupal community. They wanted to contribute to Ukraine and in the way of giving this project to, to us, to support us. And uh, it was really, really inspiring for us. Uh, also, it's like important for us to keep all of the commitments to our, it was very important at the beginning especially, to keep all of the commitments to our clients, to keep growing, to keep hiring people, and to give jobs to uh, people, a lot of people who are located from the east to support them in a way. Uh, we also launched a, a relocation program um, that helped our employees to relocate from eastern and central part of the country to the western part, as you have seen on a previous slide, that our office is located on the west. So we help with uh, finding a place to live and um, yeah, just to set up the working space. Um, and of course, um, when like during uh, autumn and winter last year, we had a new challenge as uh, massive um, attacks on our electricity infrastructure. Uh, that, that caused a blackout and uh, the threats to our like electricity. So uh, lots of the companies and Lambrick Solutions in particular uh, supplied our offices with um, generators and with Starlink terminals 
to have a, a stable uh, internet connection and electricity connection. And I mean, overall, our goal was to build uh, like a fortress out of our offices to be able to work no matter what um, conditions or circumstances around. We also have a shelter in our office um, to be able to continue, uh, continue the work. Yeah, uh, so a few words how our everyday work look like. Um, so first of all, um, news about the war become a common thing for a small talk uh, at our team, I would say. So it's not something that you will see in a conversation with our developers on some like meetings with the customers, but for some of our internal meetings, it's very common to start some small talk with uh, topics around the war and news around the war. Uh, other big thing, uh, what become a new normal for us is air raid alert. Um, I mean, now everyone in Ukraine knows where if the closest shelter, bomb shelter, how to get to the basement and where you have a safe spots in your apartments, like a bathroom or hallway. Um, so um, during like air raid alerts, they can happen at night or during a day. And uh, usually, like people react differently. Uh, some of them are just, you know, going to the basement as it should be. Some of them are just taking a safe place at their home. Uh, some of them just ignore it. And I mean, uh, it it really, you know, depends on a on a people. Uh, also, this um, I mean, huge impact on our like electricity infrastructure during a winter and autumn. Uh, caused this um, power outages and uh, for offices we supply these generators and Starlink devices but still we have lots of people who are working from home and uh, so people who work from home they manage to, uh, to, to, to set up the portable power station in their homes like, like EcoFlow or like something similar that you see on this picture just to supply the electricity and, and yeah, the uh, internet connection. So usually that helped to have this continuous uninterrupted work uh, yeah, yeah, in place. Um, of course, sometimes that happens that uh, people who are not ready to this power outages and like some hours might be missed during the working days. And we had many cases when developers were working overnight just to get the work done because everyone understand how important it is to, to keep, keep pushing, keep, keep doing their work. Um, and a few words about um, how our employees deal with the war, I mean, from a like, moral side of, of the things. Um, so um, first of all, I want to mention that, I mean, at the beginning of the war, especially like first weeks, and months, um, work was a point of stability. So, I mean, everything changed around, like, I mean, all the supply chains for different companies break. And I mean, you, you, you like check the news and terrible things are happening, but the work was something stable, something known for you, where you can just, you know, get back to your work, to your job. And that helped people just to switch from war to something else. And um, also, it's um, like everyone uh, felt the importance of their work uh, because um, due to the war, lots of other businesses and industries get stopped or get closed in, in Ukraine and we're not able to operate. And like IT business and uh, IT companies, they are like one of not that many who were able to keep working and keep uh, doing their jobs meaning that they support the economy in a way and they become very essential for our economy. So everyone understand these responsibilities and wanted to, you know, push even harder, try even better and, and make the work done, uh, no matter what circumstances are around. And uh, one more thing to mention that uh, we have kind of donation culture, I would say so, that uh, people really get used to take part in different fundraising that were focused on supplying uh, military units with different uh, important activities. Uh, our company, Lemberg Solutions, like we also participate in this and uh, we have a shared um, Slack channel uh, where people just exchange an information about different fundraisings. Uh, so usually they are related to help some relatives who are at war or like some friends, like brothers, sisters, fathers, 
And when, I mean, someone has such a request, they are posting in this channel and people from our company are really willing to help and helping to, to raise the funds for this or that request. Also, our company is taking huge part in this and usually like taking part in, and yeah, to close this uh, fundraising. Right now, uh, we have some like fundraising on a medical kit, but usually it's like, it could be different stuff like car or drones or uh, different other equipment. Um, yeah, how we fight. I mean, uh, obviously, um, lots of companies and lots of, you know, uh, businesses are interrupted by war in a way when their employees are drafted to join armed forces. Uh, we have, like from our 200 people company, we have two, uh, two people fighting right now. Uh, today I'm talking about Yaroslav Chandra, he's our Drupal developer. Um, so he was working on open social uh, projects uh, before the war. And on the picture on the right, you can see him in uh, our open space office. And on the picture on the left, he's uh, somewhere like closer to the front line. So uh, he volunteering uh, to join uh, Ukrainian armed forces to defend the country. And uh, we supplied him with many uh, different requests that, that he asked. And basically it was like tablets. It was even uniform at the beginning, thermal cameras and uh, other devices that were helping him and his like squad. So he joined like our territorial defense forces at the beginning. Uh, later on, most of the territorial defenses forces uh, were uh, basically sent to the uh, front line where they were needed the most. So right now he's on the east front line and uh, we keep supporting him uh, on a company level, uh, company Lambert, Lambert Solutions still, uh, and like keep paying compensation uh, to him. Uh, so in, in this, and also like generally speaking, provide a huge help to supply and to buy all the stuff that you see here. And yeah, of course, we are waiting uh, him to get back to us, to get back to uh, Drupal development and to, to some boring stuff with the <laughs> engineering uh, after the victory. Um, yeah, our free time activities. Yeah, so just not to speak only about the war, uh, how we uh, keep living our life. Uh, we. I mean, we kept uh, all of the social activity that we had in our company as like before the war, like um, Happy Friday and uh, um, team building activities. So we just like once per few weeks gather in our office and order some pizza and beer to have some fun, to have some rest. Uh, the restaurants and cafes are also open so you can uh, go there, order some food, have some rest. Uh, you can also go to the cinema, uh, but when you have this air raid alert, the cinema, I mean, the, the film is stopped and you need to go to the safer place. Uh, but you can return to watching a movie the day after, let's say, and uh, for free. This is how business adopt to the new reality, I would say. Uh, also, it was interesting, uh, interesting uh, picture to observe uh, during a winter time when you know, we had this power outages and lots of small uh, cafes and coffee shops. They were um, operating using generators and it was like, uh, you know, street and this small coffee shop and the generator standing on a street like a few meters away from a building because of regulations. You can't put it too close to the building. Oh, sorry. And it's like, it's loud, it's smelly because it's like diesel generator or what, but it still supply the electricity to this cafe so you can go and order your favorite coffee, your favorite latte, and you know, feel yourself a bit connected to some old life, to some calm life. And uh, I, I would say it's shown how um, our people are unbreakable and like no matter what, they will find a way how to do things, how to manage and, and overcome the, the circumstances. Uh, also, I can add that like uh, I think the COVID and all these things around COVID prepared a bit business to be flexible, to be adoptive, to be ready to adopt to, to different things. Um, so now we just have new reality, new challenges, and we try to deal with it. Um, of course, I mean, the jokes and memes are part of our free time activities. Uh, yeah, we you know generate tons of, of funny pictures even like with some dark humor that are keeping our you know mind bright 
and um, a huge part of the free time activities are volunteering activities, so people are taking part in different uh, activities by helping refugees who are like internal refugees who are moving from the east or helping with different fundraising. Uh, regarding fundraising, uh, just, just wanted to add, so it also uh, interesting to see how people can be creative to do a fundraising. For example, uh, we had cases when uh, like people organized an auction when you can uh, make a donation and win a trophy. And one of the trophy was uh, like a metal tube uh, that was from a rocket launcher from like an anti-tank weapon. So it's like a, just an empty tube, metal tube, but it was like, you know, a great trophy that you can get making a donation. And I mean, that helped a lot to uh, collect the money to buy a vehicle for one of the squad. Uh, and of course, yeah, we are very grateful uh, to TACO and to Open Social Team for the great support they provided us. Uh, I mean, uh, from the early days when the war started, when everyone, everywhere, uh, I mean, in, in Ukraine, we were busy taking care about, you know, if, if the family members are safe, how we can, you know, keep doing things. Uh, Taco and his team uh, started organizing uh, 24 Ukraine, and um, after the months of of, of this uh, of starting this activity, they already supplied uh, to Ukraine. I mean, two trucks per month, uh, two trucks per week with uh, humanitarian aid. I mean, that's that's really a lot, and especially taking into account that they haven't had uh, such experience before. So we are really thankful for that, uh, for that huge support. And besides that support, uh, Taco is keep spreading a word about uh, supporting the importance supporting the Ukraine through all of this time. And uh, he regularly checks in in Slack on us if everything is fine. So uh, yeah, it's really very in inspiring. Uh, yeah, that's it I have for today. Thank you, everyone.